All right, back to work. Back to work. Break time is over. We've got Jay Powell coming tomorrow. And my goodness, what a move, a huge move down today. I'll tell you, though, you put those two clues together, Jay Powell tomorrow morning and a huge move in one direction. You put those two together, and you have a great recipe to make some money tomorrow. I have a handful of trades. I'm tracking for Wednesday. By the time we're done tonight, you'll have an easy roadmap to make some money as well on Wednesday. Jay Powell Wednesday. Now, of course, we got a lot we're going to cover in in one of the most important videos of the week this week. Before we jump in and talk my favorite trades for tomorrow, make sure you subscribe to our channel. I don't want you to miss tomorrow night's lesson, so make sure you subscribe. And if you like these lessons, if you enjoy these videos, hit that like button for me. Give me a shout out. Give me a hell yeah down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for tuning in, sticking around tonight. Hope you guys had a fantastic day, but let's, let's get ready for tomorrow. There's plenty of opportunity coming for us on j Powell Wednesday. And of course, charts are all ready. We get the NASDAQ and the triple Qs already well i got the e-mini and the spy ready there are three there are three clues overall right now that are telling us where the best money making trades are probably going to be tomorrow one of those clues is right here on the 60 minute we have a bullish overall market with a strong or a big move going against the overall direction so bullish overall and a big move down now whenever i see this situation Bullish overall, big move down. There are two different types of scenarios or two different types of general setups I look for the following day. We'll talk about those two general ideas, two setups we're tracking for tomorrow. But first, though, let's check our schedule for tomorrow because there's another clue on the schedule for tomorrow. That's one important clue here on the 60-minute time frame. Bullish overall, big move going down now. Tomorrow morning, Wednesday morning. You probably know this already. We got Jay Powell coming tomorrow at 10 o'clock Eastern time. Throw in some jolts report at 10 a.m. And that's definitely the big market catalyst for tomorrow. I would normally say keep an eye on the beige book. But we're going to hear from the, the from, from J-Pow tomorrow. So I don't think the beige book will be that important tomorrow afternoon. But you definitely want to pay attention tomorrow around Jerome Powell. This is our second clue for tomorrow. Now, why is Jerome Powell the second out of three clues for making money tomorrow? Because oftentimes when J-Pow speaks, the markets go rain. Range bound, right? Range bound markets are always something to look for whenever Jay Powell speaks. That will definitely be something we'll talk a lot about as we go deeper into the video. So, first clue was a bull market overall into a big move down. Second clue, Jay Powell for tomorrow. Let's get our third clue going. Let's get back to our charts because it's good to know when Jay Powell speaks tomorrow. But we know the money is made in the charts, right? Let's let's dive in now and talk my favorite trades here for tomorrow. We talked about this already. Bull market overall, big, big move going lower on the 60 minute. Now let's drill down to some tick charts. You know, tick charts, we trade off tick charts in our trade room. I think tick charts make everything easier, by the way. This is a 7,000 tick chart in there, upper left hand corner. And this is the 21 EMA. That yellow line is the 21 EMA in case you're tuning in for the first time right now. Now, on this tick chart, there's one more important clue, and that, of course, is this trading range right in the middle of that chart. Now, if you're taking my free video classes, we talk a lot about range rotation, right? Now, ranges love to rotate. So the amount we go below the range will now want to rotate going back higher, roughly about the same amount below as we go back higher. Now, this is a very important area of resistance. There could be some reversals for the short side, right? And we definitely might see some breakouts going through. But that's a third big clue. All right. So now let's put all these clues together. Bullish overall with a big move down. We got j Pow tomorrow and range rotation. Anytime we see a big move like this, a strong move in one direction, we expect to see a two-legged pullback and a retest of that low. Now, while we're making our way down to retest the low, I'd like to look for what we call bull trap patterns, right? Bull trap patterns. Think about this now. Again, strong run down for the bears. We know that whenever we see a strong run like that, there's a good chance we're going to pull back and retest that low, right? On the way down, remember, we have to worry about this range rotation trying to go higher here. So whenever I see the range rotation like this, I now know I want to be a seller back to retest the low. However, though, I, I want to make sure I protect myself. And to do that, I'm going to use what's called 
a bull trap. Buyers try once, buyers try twice, and a bull trap up above that high. A lot of examples of these inside of the free video class, but that should, right, that should take us back down to retest the low. Trap the buyers in once, trap them twice, use their stops, right, to fuel that move going higher. And again, a lot of examples of these inside the free video class that pop right above that pop right above that prior swing high. Now, once we go back and retest the low, this is where we have to remember we're still an overall bull market on the 60-minute time frame. Unless we keep running lower, unless this thing continues to accelerate running lower, I would still call this an overall bull market. Again, very, very, very bearish in the short term. So once we go back and retest the low, then think about it. Anybody who sold short on the pullback, whoever sold short on the pullback, they're taking their profit down around those lows, right? Maybe I can trap in some rookies with what I call a two try failure pattern. And this is very similar to a bear trap pattern. You could call it a bear trap pattern, but I call these failure patterns. They're basically bears try once, bears try twice, and I'm trying to use their stops to fuel that bounce off of that low. Last night, in the video last night, we called this a double bottom reversal, right? So a two try failure. Now watch closely. Oftentimes, when we get that bounce off that low, the market wants to take out these highs up here, right? And potentially squeeze the rest of the session tomorrow morning. As we're going higher, I want to buy as low as I can. And to do that, I'm going to buy with a bear trap, right? And of course, bear traps are pretty simple. We'll go in, mark off the higher high in price, and find the little trap low. Now watch closely. If we're lucky on this, we can connect a high like that, bring it down off that low, and grab that bear trap pattern off the low of that channel. So this is one of kind of the two scenarios we expect to see here. Anytime we see a bull market overall and a big bear move down, we expect to get that deep pullback. We expect the buy to try to try a couple times to keep it going. But again, all that momentum, I love the idea of that bull trap and that short back down again. Once we retest the lows, now trap in those rookies, right? Don't chase it going lower. One try for the bears, two try for the bears, and run those stops. As the market bounces off that low, we then look for ways to buy as low as possible with that bear trap, right, going, going higher. Bull trap above the moving average, a double bottom or two try failure pattern. This will make a lot more sense if you guys are taking our free video classes and of course that bear trap right that higher high in price that trap low below that low that's one of the two scenarios we'll talk about here later on in the lesson tonight on the nasdaq we'll talk about that range i talked about with j Powell coming tomorrow as well now there's a very good chance because we're an overall bull market overall there's always that chance here that we get a big move down and we V bottom, right? Sometimes they'll V bottom off of these lows. We saw one of these off the CPI report only a few weeks ago, right? So sometimes we do V bottom off of a big move down in an overall bull market. How would I trade that V bottom? Here's a scenario I won't be ready for tomorrow. If it begins to pop up and run higher, I don't want to chase after it. Look for these, look for these situations right here. First of all, is a pop and grind. If we begin to pop up and grind up, this is exactly what happened during that CPI report a few weeks ago. I'm going to draw a trend line off the high. I'm going to bring it down off that low. And what we always talk about in the free video classes, right? We look left, we find prior swings, and we want to get that first test of the low of that channel. This could be a bear trap pattern like I'm drawing right here. A lot of times we'll get underneath the 21 EMA. I can use a failure pattern off of that low, failure into pullback combination, right? And remember, whenever we have a pop up that then grinds going higher, the pop leg, right? That initial kind of pop higher leg, that is the measuring leg, which means we can now use that as the final target to leave that runner. Remember, if you want to make more money, don't trade more often. Get better at holding on to trades to the final target. This is an easy way to do that as we go higher. Now, we may not get that pop and grind, but we, we, we may end up running higher here, taking out that 
pendulum swing, right? That that pendulum swing, and we may get whacked right back down again, right? Again, it's a very big move down, and we have to anticipate the bears are going to try to retest that low. Now, what happens though is if we make that big strong rotation off the high here, there are two types of patterns I'm looking for for a short back down again. One of them is that same bull trap: buyers trying once buyers trying twice and you're shorting that bull trap right off of that high it needs to be a bull trap because that momentum will be pretty strong and again we are still overall a bull market a lot of times though what happens is is it'll get whacked back down and begin to grind back down here if that happens you know where the market wants to go right it wants to take out that low again all we need to do is is mark off that low mark off that high and as again look left and find those prior swings. And I want that first test off the top of that channel. And again, it could be a bull trap like this. It could be a buyer failure above the 21 EMA, a failure into pullback combination. The goal, of course, is I can use any of the entry patterns you guys are learning in the free video course. I just want to make sure I combine those off the top of that channel. And again, the goal is to go back down to retest that low. Then we can go out pick up that two try failure and run back up from there. All right, let's slow down for a second. We've covered a lot so far in this video. I know that most of you guys know how to trade ranges. You love traps and failures, pullback combinations. But if you're watching for the first time right now, this might be a brand new language for you. This could be way over your head, but don't you worry. I teach all of these entry patterns. I have hundreds of examples of these setups, all taught in a lot more detail in our free video classes. I'll put links up top here for you in the upper right hand corner. Grab a link up top that popped up there. Take that free trading course because the strategy I teach will teach you a stupidly simple trick we use in our members trade room to know where the best trades are going to be each day. And of course, I want to help kickstart you making money. So I'll teach you four of my favorite entry patterns. Once you know where to look, you'll know how to time the perfect entry. If you're not making consistent money right now, if you're missing the best trades each day, hit that link, take that free course perfect for someone who needs a better strategy, a better roadmap to know where the winning trades are going to be each day. Also, too, keep in mind, I'm going to put all the important links tonight, the description of the YouTube video. I'll put the free class links down there, our trade room membership. We trade together every day at 8 o'clock Eastern time. And also, too, I'm on Twitter posting updates during the day. If you're on Twitter, I'll put my handle down there. Give me a follow. So now you have more idea here, right, as we as we go higher. Now, if this thing just blows out, right, if it, if it completely blows out, again, we get j Powell tomorrow. We're an overall bull market. If we blow out of this thing, remember, anytime we see a range anytime we see a range we love to look for what are called breakout pullbacks right breakout pullbacks are very very common so if we wind up blowing out right again if we run up and the buyers start struggling we then look for that short back down to retest the low because again strong run down they're going to want to retest that low but again with jpow tomorrow if this thing just crushes it and runs higher what i'll now do is is start using what was previous resistance now will become areas of of support, it will usually look a lot like this, where it'll pull back, I'll find a larger channel drawing off the highs. We'll combine that with the high of that trading range. This will give us the general area to get long. But you know me, right? I'm not a big fan of picking the bottoms on these. I'm not, I'm not going to blindly buy off that area. That's a bit of a rookie mistake I would have made almost 20 years ago. What I'd rather do is, is wait for us to test the area, get these bears trapped in, and use one of those failure into pullback combinations we talk so much about in the free video class, or a failure into a bear trap combination. Lots of examples of those, obviously, inside of the free video course. So watch closely, right? If this thing just crushes it, right? If it just rips up and blows right through all those levels, we then use this trading range for a breakout pullback. So as we go higher, it's either going to be, it, it will either be a, a pop up and grind, right? Or it'll end up being that blast up and we end up buying that breakout pullback off the top 
of that trading range. All right, guys, at this point now, I think we've got everything pretty much covered here. This one scenario, though, we haven't talked about, and that is that big trading range we are anticipating and, and definitely could be a big part of the game plan for tomorrow uh, because J-Pow at 10 o'clock Eastern time. Let's grab the NASDAQ now. I see you over there, Nazi. I know you're getting lonely over there. NASDAQ on the 60-minute, same thing, right? Same thing, overall bull market. I'm not, I'm not ready to call this a bear market. We've seen a lot of these big, big pullbacks over the past few weeks. I'm definitely not ready to call this a bear market yet. We won't call this a bear market until they pull back, hold, and keep going. Prove it to me. Prove to me this pullback is legit, right? Because over the past few months, these, these have not been legit. They've all been basically big pullbacks in the overall bull market. Now, with that said, though, we do have to respect the bear momentum, right? We have to respect the strength of these sellers. So that's definitely something on my mind right now. Back to our tick chart, though. Again, the money is made, I think, easier money on the tick chart. 4,000 tick chart there in the upper left-hand corner. Again, just like on the S&P, a huge move down. Anytime we see a big move, like this we expect a pullback and a retest of that low because we have this trading range and we're anticipating this range rotation off of that low i have to be a bit careful on the entry short because of that i will use one of those bull trap patterns right that buyers once buyers twice lower low in price a bull trap happens above that prior swing with a strong signal candle down that should take us back to retest the low once we take out that low then we don't pick the bottom right we don't pick tops and bottoms we trap those rookie bears in right think about it where the pros are taking their profit off that short at that low the bears are getting out these are rookie bears getting in we can squeeze those stops off the low, and then we know where the market wants to go, wants to take out that big high in this scenario. We're going to go out here now, and we're going to go mark off that higher high in price, that bull trap, excuse me, that, that bear trap off that low, and finish off the job there. One thing, one thing I didn't mention on the S&P, which I regret not bringing up, if we were to, for example, if we were to simply bounce hard off of that low, right? If we were to go back down to that low and bounce hard off of that low, remember, I'd like to trap the bears in down here, but if for some reason we bounce hard off that low, if we end up grinding up with that kind of V top or, or V bottom we talk about a lot in these videos, that V bottom, I don't want to chase after it. What I'll do is I'm going to mark a trend line off the high, right? I'll bring it down to that low. We're going to look left, find prior swings, grab that bear trap below prior swings, get that failure below the moving average, right? And again, we're trying to go back up and take out these highs overhead. So one thing I didn't talk about on the S&P, I regret not mentioned that before, but that V bottom coming in, off of that low. And again, same idea, right? If we end up popping up and grinding, okay, the grind is usually the giveaway. We talked about that quite a bit in last night's video. If it pops up and grinds now, it's pretty simple. Mark that high, right? Mark that low. And the hard part now is simply don't chase it. Just don't chase after it. Look left, find one of those prior swing lows that lines up with the low of that channel. That's where bear traps live. Get underneath the moving average. That's where seller failure patterns live. Get above the 21 EMA. First move back above and the first pull back off the moving average after it crosses back over. That's where pullback combinations live. Again, don't forget the pop leg is a measuring leg. So that will tell you where to leave that final target if we get it. And again, if we do run up, take out that triangle, take out that channel, take out that pendulum swing. If we do run up and we don't keep going, right? Because again, we may we may blast up and then break out pullback off that trading range. We mentioned this earlier on the S&P, right? We may end up blasting up, right? And then using the top of that trading range as a key area of support, finding those bigger channels. That will give us the general area. We're not going to pick the bottom on this, right? That's a rookie mistake. We're going to wait for those bears to come in, right? See if they can get out, trap them in, right? And then go from there and back up we go, right? And again, as I mentioned earlier, right? If we end up running up and the buyers start struggling once, 
twice. Think about that bull trap going back down to retest that low. They're, they're going to want to retest the lows. So we have to make sure we respect the bear momentum, even though I do believe we're still an overall bull market here. So a bull trap pattern, right? Lower low in price once, twice, right? Bull trap pattern. Or, or, or it's that run up, that whack back down, right? And that V top, right? That V top, that V top off that high. We may not get a good signal off the high. If it just rips back lower, our job now is to sell as high as we possibly can before we go back and take out that low. And that usually means it's going to be a bull trap pattern right off the high of that channel. The most important thing, though, is, is to draw that trend line off those lows, bring it up around the highs, and that will most of the time get you in on the right spot there for that for that short going lower. And once we retest the low there, right, then one, two, and then back up from there. Now, final scenario. We've covered quite a bit so far. The final scenario now is, is a new trading range here for tomorrow. If we end up going into a trading range for tomorrow, we have to remember that ranges, the most recent range, by the way, is the magnet, and ranges love to rotate. We still know we have, right? We still know that we have that big move down. So we know the bears are going to try to retest that low. And again, if we go sideways overnight or tomorrow morning, that range will be a, a good thing for the buyers because it will become a magnet back overhead. My biggest concern is, is that if we have a trading range pop up here I may not get that run back you know I, I love the idea of that retest that one that two I, I like the idea of that double bottom reversal you know I love I love those in overall uh, bull markets but you know what we may not get that we may not get that we may only get something like this where it kind of pops down and then we may have to go in for what, what's basically a bear trap right it's it's bears once it's bears twice it's a higher high in price right and a trap below that low. Not my favorite trade, but it's definitely something I'll be looking for tomorrow if we're stuck inside of that trading range. Now, it's really important that we look for a bear trap entry here. I can look for a two try entry at that low. You know, I, mean, I, I mean, I wouldn't argue with a bear trap at that low, but why, why, why the difference, right? Why the difference? The difference is because once we retest the low, that's mission accomplished, right? So, so I, I can be a little more aggressive on that on that retest, right? I can't be very aggressive on this one because again, we know the bears have all that momentum. They'll try to retest that low. I want to be a little more patient on that. Now, if all we get is that is that bear trap low, think about now how, how, how ranges work. They like to rotate, right? So rotation off the low, rotation off the high, that is where the market wants to go. I always like take some profit off at the top of that trading range and then leave the runner up around that pendulum swing. Now, a lot of times what happens is, is again, because we're an overall bull market, a lot of times what happens is, is we don't stop, right? We don't stop at that pendulum swing. It keeps on going and starts grinding, grinding higher. And you know how to trade a grind breakout, right? You know how to trade these. You mark off those highs. You bring it down to those lows, right? And what do you do? You look for that that, that pullback, right? Or even better would be we begin to use the, the what was the range top, that becomes an area of support now, right? That becomes support there now. We may end up blasting up, right? Breakout pullback off of that trading range. And again, we'll go out and look for some more ranges, some, some channels tomorrow. We'll find some channels and sort of grab that breakout pullback from there. All right, so we're going to keep that in mind here on a possible range. The other scenario would be we go into a trading range, right? Jay Powell speaks. The market rips higher, but again, right, we have that overall kind of bear move right there. We get a bull trap, buyers once, buyers twice. That traps off the high. The bears are trying to take out that low. They then, of course, rotate this sucker back down in the opposite direction and then we pick it up from there we then pick it up and then again that same one two with a bear trap low or that double 
bottom reversal from there. And again, I realize a lot of this is brand new to you right now if you're watching for the first time right now, but this will all make a lot more sense, have a lot more examples and a, and, and a, and a big rundown of what these entry patterns look like on a real chart. So just be aware of that possible fake out breakout off the high, take the amount above the high, bring it down to that low. That will give you an area to look for either a bear trap entry, like I described a few moments ago, or, or, or we may go all the way down to that low, take out that double bottom and go from there. All right, guys. And of course, right. And of course, if we do end up going sideways here, which is which is likely hit a Powell, if we go sideways, right, and we end up breaking out, right, breaking out, we know that we like to use either that pop and grind, right, going higher, mark off that high, mark off that low, find those prior swings. I won't bore you to death by going back over the whole thing again, right? But that's the idea, right? Or or we get that we get that strong breakout, no grind, right? No grind. And again, we go out, look left, find some prior highs, mark off that low. Think about now making that that prior top a level of support. We wait for that pullback that will usually get us underneath the moving average, get those bears getting short here. There's that failure into pullback combination going higher. Remember, anytime we have a range breakout, the breakout leg is the measuring leg, all right? The breakout leg is the measuring leg. So if we do get the range around Powell tomorrow and we see a breakout going higher, bingo. Now you know where the measured move is and you'll learn a lot more about measured moves in the free video classes. But again, right, if you want to make more money, don't trade more often. Hold on to those winning trades until it's a tenant target. If we see a range breakout, look at illustrating right here, we're going to want to use that breakout leg as the measuring leg. All right, guys, I think we've covered all the scenarios here now. We know the bears want to go back and retest the low. We love the idea of the buy off of that low. Will we, will we bull trap off the high back down? Will it pop up and keep going? for that for that v bottom which is again is exactly what happened the cpi report last week right uh, two weeks ago right cpi report that's exactly what happened back after the cpi report that is definitely something on my radar for tomorrow and we'll be watching tomorrow morning closely obviously if we go sideways into this range because ranges they love to rotate so don't get caught chasing breakouts wait for the proof of the breakout and if you don't know what that looks like again the free video classes will teach you more about this and we'll of course do it together tomorrow morning in our trade room right guys speaking of which that's the plan for tomorrow now don't forget tomorrow morning eight o'clock eastern time come trade this with me uh, there, there really isn't any there's no better way to make consistent money in the markets than to learn and trade along every morning in our trade room i'll put all the important links tonight the description of the youtube video the trade room links the free class links the twitter feed links so hit me up in the description for the details down there any questions comments concerns any issues getting started with free classes don't be afraid to call email use live chat we're always here to help out every step of the process fantastic job today we got big day coming tomorrow get a good night's sleep we'll see you tomorrow eight o'clock eastern time in our morning trade if not come back tomorrow night and we'll get ready for the reaction day after jay powell's testimony tomorrow morning that's all for me tonight guys be well be nice to each other out there and you better be here tomorrow adios amigos bye, -bye for now